Bill Gates is not 1800. He made that up, by the way. I, I, I think I told, I've said, I told the story a few times. The reason I know that's fake is because I actually know somebody who, who went to school um, at the same time, as, went to Lakeside, the high school where Bill Gates went at the exact same time. And they were a member of the chess club. And they, they told me the story how he showed up one time, he played a couple of games, he lost, and then he walked out and never went back. Oh, let's play D3 here. We're going to play the Miasis opening with Knight D2. Um, just play E3. Maybe play a Hippo or something. I don't know. A <laughs> guy didn't want to get bullied. Yeah, we're over 1,000, you guys. 1,000 plus. I can't pre-move every move because people will, will snipe and then I'll just lose every game. Can I do two bishops made if I can get there? Sure, absolutely. Okay, let's go B3, bishop B2. So we only have 2,000 more points to go. Let's do a crossover with Devin Laird. Of course, of course, of course I would be a big fan of that. Yeah. Go here, target the pawn, diagonal. Am I drinking beer? No, you guys. First of all, it's very clear what's in this. Secondly, um, no, it's water. It's just this, this mug is from uh, Oktoberfest in Boulder. Let's go C4. <clears throat> I guess I take because the, the rook is hanging in the corner pocket. Hiding the liquor with the fingers? Yeah, no, I was actually just hiding the logo because it says Oktoberfest Boulder. Yeah, it says Oktoberfest Boulder, which of course is Colorado. Let's take the knight here. I can just take on D4. <clears throat> Where's my cell refrigerator? I don't have that refrigerator anymore, you guys. Uh, I'm back in Florida. I, I left California some time ago. Rookie one, hit the queen, hit the bishop. Everything's looking very, very peachy here. Have I been to Oktoberfest in Leavenworth, Washington? No, I haven't. What do I like about Boulder? Nature, mountains, clean air. Um, people are very chill. What to say? Am I immortal? No, I'm not immortal. In fact, I think I'm Iron. I'm Iron at, uh, at Valorant. So no, I'm not immortal, sorry. You might want to check out some other streams if you're looking for that quality of gameplay. Let's play rookie five here. Hit the queen. Maybe queen e2 next move. Um, should be very, very good for me here. <clears throat> Let's go queen e2. Rook got five. Of course, should be winning pretty soon. Who do I have winning the candidates? Uh, I have myself winning the candidates, of course. Who else? Okay, it goes rookie eight. I'll go queen d two. My goal is to get to uh, eleven hundred, I think, before title two. So that's my goal. Let's go here. Target the pawn. Well, I bet on myself. I don't. I. I mean, I don't think I'm even. I don't think I'm allowed to. And even if I was, it seems kind of unethical somehow. It doesn't seem right. I don't know. It's there. Um, let's just take. Canada starts on June 16th. I, uh, I think the first round is June 17th, actually. I could be wrong, but yeah. What is this over the top? Let's take and go King F1 here. Technologic just subscribed. XQC arm one P O O. You can bet on yourself but not against yourself. Thank you, Technologic, for the 15. I don't think so because there, there's that football dude who got banned for a season for betting uh, on his team, right? The football dude got banned, the wide receiver. He bet like, what do you bet? $1,000 on his team to win the Falcons? And he got banned for one year, even though the NFL is actively pushing sports betting. Like, so I don't know about that. Let's go B4 here. That, by the way, was a total joke. I have to be honest. That, that's that's ridiculous. I, I have to say. I have to say that's ridiculous. Let's take with the king. Yeah, let's go F4, H3, king F2. Okay, let's go h3. Let's try to create some wide peepos here. I, I think I'm gonna start to create the wide peepos. 
Yeah, I create the wide people so he can't stop them both. They're split too wide. I mean, he just can't stop. He can't stop both pawns. I go this way. And now I go this way. And again, he just can't stop both. And now one gets through. All right, let's see. What can I do this time? Let's play the Grob. Let's get back to regular basics. Why do you kind of have a bad opinion on Capablanca when even Fisher talks about him being the top three? I don't have a bad opinion of him. I just think when you compare him to modern day players, I mean, he's not as strong, but I mean, he's a phenomenal player. Someone asked me earlier who I'd want to play who's of uh, the chess players is not alive, and I said he'd probably be the one. All right, let's go queen e2 here, maybe take on g5 with the bishop. Uh, which player am I most excited playing the candidates? Probably, um, probably, I guess, Ali Reza. I mean, he's the only one I've never played. I never met Aberbach. I'm pretty confident that he was at some of the tournaments that I was playing at, but I never spoke to him. Uh, let's take, if he takes, I just take back. This is all looking very, very good for me. Really, really nice here. Do I think Adolf Anderson would be a GM today? I have no idea. Just no idea at all. But you don't think he was that good because of technology? Well, what I'm saying is with technology, he'd be much better. I mean, that, that that's kind of what I'm saying. Like with technology, he'd be phenomenally good. But I mean, of course, when you compare old players to modern day players, it's like you can't really do it. I've never played Ali Reza in classical. It's, it's crazy. I mean, even I played him in the World Rapid and Blitz. I think that was only one game. That was only like that Rapid game that should have been a draw where I overpressed and lost. But I don't think I played him in Blitz. I actually don't think I, I think I've played him one time ever and over the board one time ever like literally am I afraid of Fabiano's potential prep for the candidates you guys I've played chess my whole life I'm not afraid of anybody take the pawn take a rook <clears throat> all right I'm gonna try to get to 1100 let's play the England gambit here I'm scared of I'm scared of fettuccine fettuccine carbonara I mean seriously I'm not I'm not afraid of him but d5 yeah. How can I be afraid of someone whose name is Fettuccini? Let's play knight e7, knight g6 here. Uh, let's go knight g6. Play a6 and bishop g4. Let's just take the bishop here. I'm going to be afraid of Ali Reza when he shows up jacked. Yes, you guys. I'm going to be super afraid. Let's go knight h4 and take advantage of the pin here towards the queen with knight on f3 and the pawn on g2. Fabiano without a supercomputer equals 2300 feet a no but you know what's funny is I remember there were there were people who actually were saying like Gary they were saying that Gary Kasparov like without without like all that prep he would have been like a 2500 GM and that actually made me kind of that kind of made me laugh when I heard that I don't remember if it was Shirov or somebody who said that but someone said like Kasparov's like without that prep he would have been like 2500 and that really made me laugh yeah okay let's go knight f3 hit the queen hit the rook here yeah, no, I, yeah, 2,500. Am I scared of Tifu? Why would I be scared of Tifu? I actually would love to collab with him at some point, but he's on the other side of Florida, so it's kind of hard. Okay, I'm not going to play E5, obviously, right? Oh, let's play the, um, let's play, do I want to play the Elephant or the Latvian? Let's play the, uh, let's play, let's play the Elephant Gambit with D5 here and E4. Am I scared of visiting Wardell and Valorant? I have to say, speaking of Wardell, I, I hope he's okay. I saw... I saw that he was tweeting that like I guess he put all his all of his like money in like crypto or something and his account got hacked and so he lost basically all his life savings which is pretty pretty tragic um so I I, I hope he's doing okay take the pawn here so yeah let's go knight f6 here oh uh, with Gary's prep I'd be 2900 yeah of course of course Libby you'd be 2900 yeah but I do feel I feel really bad for him you don't think he's doing okay after that? Yeah. James Dean, Brooklyn's got a winning team. Davy Crockett, Peter Pan, Elvis Presley, Disneyland, Bardo, Budapest, Alabama, Khrushchev, Princess Grace, Peyton plays trouble in the Suez. Are all right. Let's just castle here. Play rookie eight. Target the queen. Uh, Hikaru, how 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 you improve that much to become GM Hikaru? I don't know. What do you mean by that? I don't know. Yeah, Laval without prep is 1100, right? Yeah, we're, we're all just terrible without prep. I mean, to be fair, though, joking aside, Andre Asipenko did everyone a big disservice because when he lost that game to Levon out of the opening when he thought he was playing me and then he, he was playing Levon, when he lost in like 17 moves, that actually does make a lot of people wonder how much, how much prep matters. Let's 
Target the queen and the pawn. What kind of player would Landon Donovan be if he played chess? Oh, we're back to that back to that running joke. Uh, I don't know. GM Hikaru, all he was right now prepping 15 hours a day with his brother. Hikaru playing noobs to entertain us. Of course, you guys. Because at the end of the day, you have to find your passion. And, you know, at some point, it's, it can't just be money. It has to be more than that. It's like the musicians. Like, you know, why are the Rolling Stones still performing, like, after 70 years on the road? He plays F4. I'm going to play F5. Here. We're going to play the Panteldakis Counter Gambit. I'm going to take and go Knight F6 here, or maybe D6. Go Knight C6 here, and take. Now, I open up the diagonal for my light square bishop. And I can also use the other diagonal with my dark square bishop. So let's go, uh, let's go here, target the knight. What should I read for the end game of Dvoretsky's end game manual? So difficult. There was something called Madness, like Edmar Madness end games. I forget if that's the title or not, but I thought that was a little bit better. And for a slightly lower, lower level, there was also another book. It was like a pocket sized book. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it. There was like, it was like pocket. It was a mini book. And I actually thought it was really, really good. Um, yes, it was concise chess endings, I think. Let me see. Was it this? Yeah, it was this book. And it's really, really small. Um, let me, uh, can I pull this image? Let me see if I can open this image. Cause I don't want to leak on Amazon where, where I'm at. Uh, but there was this book. It's called concise chess endings. It's very, very small. It's every man chess. Uh, it was a very small book and I think it's very practical. So that's what I would recommend if anything. Okay, I'm going to play rook e8 here. Maybe takes me a bishop g4. So those would be the two books. I remember actually, because it says it was published in 2002, which means I got that book in 2002 or 2003. And in 2002, I had just become a GM, and I thought it was a very practical uh, little pocket endgame book. Uh, should you learn middle games or endgames? Learn middle games, because most games that you play below about master level end game is not going to play a role in terms of the outcome for who wins or who loses play 95 i leaked end game prep indeed i did let's take the queen let's take the pawn take the knight all very very good let's take the juicer let's take the juicer let's go here target the pawns on c3 and f4 here i'm gonna eat the juicer Let's go here. I'm up a queen. Queen for a bishop. Queen is obviously worth a lot more. It's crazy you haven't played classical with Ferruja. Do you think it'll be hard? No, I don't. But it's like, I'll give you an example. Who was it? Was it Esapenko I'd never played in classical before Berlin? There's someone else who's really good who I've never played, I think. Um, was it, it's not Rapport. There's, I forget. I feel like, there, let's play the Van Geet opening. There's someone else. Um, there was someone else. I forget who it was. Let's play F4 here. We're going to play the Fromm's Gambit. The Bar, Bar Gambit is what it's called. Or Fromm's Gambit, Bar's Gambit with E takes F4. I don't know what that means, but let's go D4 here. But yeah. No, but I think Esa Penko, he's like 27-20. I, I, I literally had never played him before the Grand Prix. It's just kind of wild to think about it. Uh, let's go E3, Bishop B5 maybe, or Bishop G5. Hey, how's it going with Shrambini? By the way, Shrambini is in Germany. Maybe if he comes to Spain, like... Maybe you could come to Spain before the event. I could like play some tennis and and do all that jazz. Or maybe next time in Germany, go go like go go hit some. Let's go here, maybe castles. It's just like everyone wishes they were better better at chess. I wish I was better at tennis. Um. All right. Let's go knight here. Put pressure on the bishop on f5. How many moves do I think I've played in my whole life? A lot. I, I don't know how many, but it's a lot. Yeah. Mark Esserman, yeah, of course. Obviously. No, Esserman's the best, uh, best, uh, best chess tennis player by a big margin. All right, let's see. I just take and take with check on f5. Have I played Cinderov? Yes, I played Cinderov in the World uh, World Rapid and Blitz. I beat him in the, I think it was the, yeah, it was Rapid because obviously Blitz or was it was it Rapid or no? Actually, I beat him in Blitz. I think on the first day at the end of the first day, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it, it, the thing is that that whole event kind of blurs together at this point, so I don't really remember it well. I'm gonna trade the queens here. B four, maybe Knight B five. 
Thoughts on Alcaraz? He plays chess too. Doesn't like every tennis player play chess? I mean, Medvedev is the obvious one who plays chess, but I feel like every every tennis player plays chess for some reason. I mean, like, every, everyone does. Would I trade 100 ELO for Federer's backhand? I mean, hell yeah, I would. Because unless Federer's playing against Nadal, his backhand is phenomenal. I mean, come on, let's be serious. Of course I would. Let's go Rook F1 here. I mean, what, what Federer's backhand is great, except when he plays Nadal, because it just it, it gets up way too high. Or it used to, at least, I guess. Until, until he started using the bigger racket. Let's go back to D3, play G5, G6 here. Let's go King G2, maybe G5, G6. How long will I be streaming? Uh, we're streaming at least for another two or two to three hours. I thank you again for everybody who's hanging in. We still have 11,000 people watching. We're like, what, seven, seven hours, 40 minutes in? Just chilling, having a good time. Keep rolling, roll the pawn up the board and the game. Yeah, well, his backhand dominated Nadal when um, once uh, once he switched to a bigger racket. It's eleven thousand one hundred eleven people exactly. Great numbers. Go check and mate. All right, I'm gonna play more of the England gambit here. Let's go. E oh, okay, I'll go here then instead. Do I have elbow pain from tennis? No. Uh, did you lose a lot of classical rating before the pandemic? Any reason why? I didn't, I mean, I was on a downward trend, but it wasn't as exaggerated as people seem to think it was. That's a wild move. Um, mainly it's, I was a little bit burned out from chess. I wasn't happy. And if you're not, if you're not in a good mood, you're not positive about the game. It's quite difficult to have good results. Good D6, target the pawn, open the diagonals, both bishops well placed. Let's take on G4 here. I mean, Rafa has to be my favorite because, like, I mean, Federer is just like it's too. He makes it look too easy. Obviously, it's not that easy, but he Federer is just annoying because he he looks like the guy who just like was gift. He, he was like born with like all the gifts. Uh, whereas it feels like uh, Rafa just he's just like this like like that bull that just like he's got that that it's like he, there's always there's always that red flag or the red. It's, yeah, you wave the red flag in front of him, and he's always just ready to like fight, kind of. Oh, thank you so much to Melissa Grace for the prime. Thank you so much to Melissa. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I would say it has to be uh, it has to be Rafa for me. Let's take the bishop here. Uh, I guess I'll just take a pawn here. Maybe go queen f six. Is Rafa Nadal a future of tennis? Thank you, Felipe. Thank you for that play on earlier uh, the earlier tournament that I was playing. And thank you. Go here. Target the pawn on f two. Isn't that how you play chess? You get the red flag and you fight, right? You must like hardworking people. Of course I do, because I, I wasn't really blessed with natural talent at the game of chess. I mean, when I started, I was just terrible. I was terrible at the game. I mean, I was just awful at the game for the first like six months a year. Obviously, once I got past that, I mean, I had this hardworking ability, this natural talent, but at the beginning it was awful. I was terrible. You to Ann Potato for the prime. Thanks so much to Ann Potato. So, yeah. Let's take take. Yeah, we're, we're, is this 69? This will be 69. A very nice score, yeah. I never understand what Hikaru plays, but I'll try. Yeah, I mean, I, I know. I know the feeling. Is a candidate speedrun the future of the World Chess Championship speedrun? <laughs> Good one, yeah. All right, let's go G6. Guard the guard the knight on F5 here. I guess I'll make a check on E3 next move. Let's go check. I'll take as well and play rookie six. Have I ever played StarCraft? Yes, I played StarCraft quite a bit. I, I love StarCraft. Karen all the way, baby. Karen forever. I always loved watching. I mean, even now, occasionally, I'll, I'll put up, put on an old video of Slayer as Boxer. Uh, let's go check and go here. Starcraft 1, of course. Yeah. Let's go check, check. Mate. All right, let's keep going. 
Thank you to Picky33 for the five months. Thank you so much, Picky33. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Battle Cruiser operational. Yes. Yes. But I mean, games never get that far. So, well, maybe not ever, but I don't know. That's, that's pretty deep. That's pretty deep into the game. Yeah, siege tanks with marines. I think. I think was it was it, was it, I remember watching a video where like I think a Slayer's boxer was doing siege tanks with like was it uh, with vultures and spider mines. I want to say let's go ninety six here. Go D five and takes. Yeah, I think it was doing vultures and siege tanks and marines. Some combination. Oh, let's just go E six bishop D six ninety seven. I'm still playing since 1998. I'm talking about Terran, of course. Good Queen C7. Play H4, H5 once? Absolutely. Any, anything's possible. Let's trade some pieces here. I'm going to castle, play Bishop D6. Or let's go here. Castles, Bishop D6. Go here, target the knight. Uh, so what? He's still ruining the game for the lower lower rated players? No, I'm not ruining the game. They get refund. The points get refunded. You guys, it's not ruining at all. Points get refunded. In your opinion, why do people like to watch you? Well, I think it's many factors. I mean, I, I think I have a lot of crazy stories, a lot of different, a lot of a, a very different perspective, perhaps, than I think a lot of other people. I think the high gameplay obviously is quite unique. Um, and I think I think it's it's a mix of many different things. But, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to be like flexing. I'm just just saying. You know, that is one thing I will say and I think that applies to anything, whether it's chess, whether it's sports. When when you see that ridiculously high-level gameplay at something, it's just like there's certain things that like money can't buy. There's certain talents that are just like so unique that uh I mean, it's always fascinating to see. I'm going to play F6 here, chop away at the center, chop away at F2. It's why I think with chess, or besides just generally having a lot of mystique and you know be, have, being that game that smart people are supposed to play, it's why like throughout my career in chess, like I've I've seen a lot of people who are very wealthy who really love the game, and I think it's because chess is one of those things where no matter how much money these people have, they could they could, you know spend every every waking hour trying to play the game, and they still can't get, get past a certain point, and it's one of those one of those things where you know. There's just certain things you just like money can't you, you can take lessons do all these things but it won't get you to um you, you can't just like become a gm or things like that um let's play the saragossa opening again it's been a while since i played this yeah it's like bill gates versus magnus is a great example like bill gates might be a very wealthy guy or the most wealthy guy for periods of, for large periods of time in the last uh last quarter century but then of course he plays against magnus and no amount of money he has is going to prevent him from being completely embarrassed. Bill Gates is not 1800. He made that up, by the way. I, I, I think I told I've said, I told the story a few times. But the reason I know that's fake is because I actually know somebody who who went to school um, at the same time as went to Lakeside, the high school where Bill Gates went at the exact same time. And they were a member of the chess club. And they, they told me the story how he showed up one time, he played a couple of games, he lost and then he walked out and never went back. Unlike Paul Allen, by the way, who actually was a real chess player. Let's go 93 and 95 and Bishop F4. No, Paul Allen was a real chess player. I think he was like he was actually like 1800. He played on the on the high school team at Lakeside. Let's castle here and go rookie one in 95. Let's go C4 and attack. So yeah. Wasn't embarrassed by Magnus. Well, he actually was because if you say you're 1800 and you play a game and you lose in like 10 moves, like it's it's one thing to hang a bishop, hang a rook, whatever, and just you know lose a game in 20 moves. When you just walk into a very basic checkmate in 10 moves, I mean that's kind of uh, yeah, I mean that that isn't that isn't so good. Paul Allen's Elo, I don't know what it was. I mean my my friend actually who who did go to Lakes, I, I mean I, they sent me a picture a long time ago of that. I mean. There's a picture of Paul Allen, you know, playing the, playing on the high school team. Let me see if I can find it actually. Um, Two ninety five here. Let me see four results. Okay, let me uh, let me take here. I guess I take with the knight. 
Oh, I found it. I found it, you guys. I found this. Yeah, so just to show you guys, uh, I, I actually found it. That's, that's crazy that I found it. Um, let me win this game and I'll show you guys. Let's take and take. Thank you to Secret Sauce for the 14 months. Uh, let's just take and go Bishop D6, win the Rook here. Let's double stack the Rooks on the 7th rank. Let's just go here. Let's go here, create the classic right triangle. And I also have Rook C8 and of course 90 degrees, GG. All right, he resigns, let me stop the clock. Yeah, so as I was saying, you guys, like I'll just pop this up. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I just found this also because I'm very good at searching. Like this is just a picture. Uh, this was, I don't know what year this was, but this is just a picture and you can see um, it's a little bit smaller. Yeah, like you, you, guys, you guys can actually see this. Like this is this is like the Lakeside High, Lakeside High School team. You can see, what's it say? Left to right, H. Fletcher, M. Wilhelm. And then this is Paul Allen right here in the middle. This this guy with the glasses. So yeah, anyway, that's just, just a picture that I was able to dig dig up out of nowhere. But anyway, yeah, so I, w I wasn't actually like trolling. Thank you so much to Stu Chains for the prime. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, 80, 80s band, yeah, yeah. Uh, fi oh, sorry, Fisher, not Fletcher, sorry. So it's like Fisher. Yes, of course. H Fisher, not not W, not not um not 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 R Fisher. H Fisher, H Fisher. Anyway, okay. Obviously, I'm not gonna play E4 in the candidates. Uh, he plays D6, which is a good move. Um, what is a variation? I think I'm gonna play Bishop E2 here. I'm gonna go D3 and play H4, H5. Ah, uh, he plays the E5, so he actually plays the Philidor, not a Pyrrhic. I'm just gonna keep attacking. Keep attacking. Your streams got me and my jet back into chess. Love you forever. Awesome, Am Potato. Awesome. That's great to hear. When is the candidates? June 16th to July 7th. Just go here, maybe move the knife to F5, target diagonal. Uh, did I ever play chess club on Oculus? Would be insanely cool to play viewers. I mean, I have an Oculus, but I haven't used it probably in a year or more. Oh my gosh, I missed a, I missed a checkmate. Oh, oh, that was such a beautiful mate. Oh my gosh, I missed knight g7, king e7, knight d5. That was such a beautiful mate. Wrong with me, let's go check. Oh, that's so disappointing. That's such a letdown. Total, total mental letdown. Let's go b4 here. Um, let's see what he does. Now he goes here. I mean, I guess I go check. Let's take. Uh, I guess I'll play knight takes h5 here. Yeah, I, I wasn't looking. Wasn't looking close enough. Yeah. What's the best way to improve in chess? Uh, I mean, mainly it's through, I would say, consistent, consistent play. Uh, to yeah, total mental breakdown. It was the name of the game. When am I driving Madrid? I haven't really figured that out yet. I'll be going to Spain quite a bit early uh, at the start of June, but I don't know when, um, I don't know exactly when I'll get to Madrid. I did see what happened in New York. It's very sad. Very, very sad. Yeah, very sad. Thank you to uh, Butter Tonu for the three months. Thank you so much, Butter Tonu. Appreciate it. Thank you. You delivered checkmate with a pawn. Okay, very exciting. Apparently, that was the first Pyrrhic game. Wait, what? What? I don't care. Okay, let's play Sicilian. Because of course, I'm not going to play Sicilian, right? In the candidates. Uh, let's play. Let's play the Catalima Ka variation of the Sicilian with B6 and Bishop B7. Do I watch F1? Of course I've watched Drive to Survive, but I haven't really followed closely. I saw Mercedes is doing pretty poorly, um, which I was kind of surprised by. I mean, obviously I'm a big Lewis Hamilton fan, so it's a little bit disappointing. Go E5 here. Let's look at Bishop C5 and H6 maybe.
Why did I not play Norwich Chess in 2019? Um, I was not invited in 2019. That's the main reason I didn't play. Right, okay, let's just go knight before, try to attack here on the queen side. They'll come with updates in three races. Yeah, I just mean, obviously, I'm rooting for, for Lewis. Eat the juicer on A2. If I give you 100 million USD, will you quit chess? I actually don't think I would quit chess. I'm going to give an honest opinion. I don't think I would quit chess. I love the game too much. I don't think I would ever actually quit. Let's play the birds opening. Honestly, like, I just love the game too much. Go here. Yeah, I really don't think I would. <laughs> because I'm already a billionaire, right? Let's go here and do the double Fianchetto. No, I'm actually not. I'm not trolling. It's just, it's a fun game. It's a really, really fun game. I don't think I would. I don't think I would. What if your wife made you quit? Well, you guys, I'm kind of good enough at chess that that's not really an issue. Now, I know a lot of you guys who have wives out there, it's probably like you're, 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 you're on chess.com or lead chess or wherever, and you're playing, you're playing like 8.30 or 9 o'clock, you know, the wife comes in, she's like, she gives you that glare, like, why are you wasting your time on chess? So, I mean, in that case, I understand having to like kind of stop. I, I mean, in that case, I understand. But, but generally speaking, um, so, you know, it's a little bit different. You need a better tone over the 300 bits. Yeah. Holy smoke, so accurate. Well, I mean, I know people who are like, I, I mean, I, I know people obviously are like 18, 1900 or 2000 even. Like they're, they're strong amateurs. Obviously it's not something they can make a living at, but you know, they love the game. They've, they've studied, they've played a lot as kids, then as adults. And then of course, you know, at some point it's like, yeah, you get addicted. You have that, you have the, like that one week where you're binging or, you know, whatever it is. And you're playing like nine, 10 o'clock. And, and of course the wife gets really angry. Just like when you, just like when you go to some tournament over the weekend, it's like you go play your casual tournament with the, with the, with the boys, uh, you know, Saturday and Sunday and you, you have to spend some money and then you come home and it's like, you know, it's, it's not always great. Of course I'm right. Obviously, obviously I'm right. I mean, I know this from like. I know this from friends, so I'm not just making this up. Yeah, like I do. Do I ever visit normal chess clubs? Not, not really, not in recent times, but I mean, I have. Let's take the knight here. I guess I'll go check and take the bishop and queen too. Let's take the bishop, maybe queen to I am in a little bit of danger here, but he takes the pawn. If he takes it on g4, he might have gotten some attack here on the king's side. Artemi is going to play in title Tuesday. I mean, everybody plays in title Tuesday. It's a lot of money. It's $1,000. I mean, it's no joke. Seven ads? What do you mean seven ads? I'm not running ads. What are you talking about? Let's go 95. What do you mean? I'm not running ads. I'm not running ads. What are you talking about? You see ads, but I didn't hit the ad button. Oh, is Twitch just auto? Maybe Twitch is just auto running. Yeah, see, I have a button to hit run ads. So that, that, that's just me. That's probably Twitch. That's that's Twitch. That's Twitch. Twitch is just like hitting you up with the ads. Yeah, because I, I, I literally have the green button to uh, to run ads. Right, let's go work up one here. They get a quaff for the 14 months. Thank you so much to quaff. Appreciate it. Let's go bishop c1. Maybe rook f5. Maybe bishop g5. Maybe king g3 h4. Let's go rook f4. <laughs> Hit them with ads after these finish. No, I'm not going to do that. That would be pretty... Uh, that would be pretty uh, sadist. Let's take and go bishop f4 here. He goes f5, but now I can just go after the pawns here. Because they're all in the dark square. I'm just going to eat all the pawns. He does have f4, but I have king h2 and then king f3, king g3. I'm I'm strong at puzzles, but I never get tactical game. Is there, is there a way to make games tactical? Yes, your opening choice is very important. If you're playing, if you're very good at puzzles, you should definitely strive for more tactical openings. Now, of course, it's... Again, without every every situation is different, so it's not something where I can give you just like an easy answer. But um, but I, but I, what I would say is that I think at the end of the day, you have to find openings that are more suited to that style. Let's take. Did you see Kiwi Freak for the three months? Thank you so much. Appreciate. It. 
I go here, I run the two pawns, pretty easy win. Go fix the pawn on a dark square so I can eat the pawn. Let's take. All right, let's go here, let's go here, let's go here. All right, I think I'm going to play one more game because it is actually 10 minutes till title Tuesday. So let's go F4, play another bird defense. You're on add five out of seven. Yeah, but I'm not running ads. I don't understand it. Go E3 and Bishop B5 here. Bird is the birds is an eco opening. Yeah. Do I watch onion news? No, I don't read the onion much lately. When I was younger, I used to read it all the time. Take. Go here in knight c3, just develop. Can I play the birds defense of title Tuesday? I'll play it in round one if I get white. I'll play it, I'll play it with white in round one if, if that's okay. Uh, let's go here, bishop b2, target the diagonal. I also have rook g1 as well. Go here, rook g1 maybe. Let's take rook g1, target g7. All looks very, very pleasant. Choose your character, exactly, yeah. It's great to see so many people play Smash and they actually understand the reference. So many auto run ads. Yeah, I, I don't I didn't hit the ad button. Like I'm not joking. I didn't I didn't hit it, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on exactly. So here, a 92 next move. Press the green button. Okay, let's see. I mean, no, but I can't do that to you guys. Oh, uh, let's go here. No, I, I can't do that to you guys. Oh, let's just take the rook on h8 here. Uh, I'm not going to do it to you guys. Since apparently you guys are getting getting hit with enough stuff already. Let's go rook g5. Go here. So rook g2, rook h2 next move, trap the queen, should be winning pretty soon. Let's go here, trap the queen in the corner pocket. This will be GG. Does Toblov have an account online? I'm pretty sure he does, but I don't know what it is. All right, get the win, so... Yeah.